Welcome back to Court TV Live. I'm Julia Janae. Ahmaud Arbery was shot and killed in Brunswick, Georgia on February 23rd of 2020. Months later, the video that went viral of that shooting death drove hundreds of thousands into the street demonstrating. Ahmad's father, Marcus Arbery, recalls going to the scene of his son's death and shares his thoughts on that emotional visit. Marcus, can you take us to that day? I know that had to have been unimaginable, the pain. I'm seeing your siblings, just the pain in their eyes that day. That's the worst time of my life. What hurt me so bad, how they killed my kids and lied. They told all them lies. They told the mama to lie. The detective Larry kept lying. They ran a, uh, uh, to me it was a racial lynch mob. They lied like that. On our law enforcement, they lied like that. It's the worst time of my life. When you swore under the oath like that and you don't want to do your job, people are getting killed. My kid got killed. And y'all started with lying to me and the mama. Good thing me and my brother. And my sister did our homework. Them folk were lying to us so much that they wouldn't even talk to me and my brother no more. What did you see in Satilla Shores what, when you went there that day? I seen all my kid blood on the ground. My, my brother showed me where the spot where he was murdered at. Part of the blood was on the ground. They tried to wash it up, but you know how blood is. They couldn't even wash it up. Ran him down and murdered him. Ran him down. And Lord, when that video came out, it like to kill my two children. It like to kill my family too. Because we never seen nothing like that in our life before. I'm thinking I'm looking at some racial movie that on TV. I, I can't believe nothing like this happened in Broadway. How do you police let something like this happen in that little town like this now? I, I can't believe that. I was really shocked. I was like, no, nah, that, that, that couldn't happen here. I know racial was bad, but I ain't know it was that bad like that. And I want to lay out the dates for this because this happened February 23rd, 2020. The video was not released until over two months later. So what was happening before you saw the video? You said you were told that this was a home invasion. Tell me about what was going through your mind when you first heard that. I know it was a lie because my kid don't go out like that. He had that to do. He had that to do. He got his mom, his aunts, all of them. Anything he wanted, he got it. He was the baby. Anything he called his mama for, his dad, his brother, uncle, he got it. My son had dreams. That's why he worked out. He ran. He had dreams. He was dreaming. He wanted to go in that rain. That's why he ran every day. When he owned something, he owned it. He didn't have that to do. I knew it was a lie. A home and base, I, me and my brother already know what time was. He said, no, no. Gary, and I see you reacting to that. Were you all? Yes, um, I was, okay, I was at work when I got the call. My sisters, JT, his partner, who he ran with all the time, he called me about three or four times that morning and saying Quiz got killed. And I said, Quiz got killed. And he said, yeah, Quiz got killed in a home, in home invasion, he tried to break in somebody's neighbor house. So I said, no, that's not quiz. Like right there. So I kept hanging up on him. I kept hanging up. And then about 10 o'clock that morning, he called me again. He said, Gary, you need to come home. He said, I'm telling you, quiz got killed. So uh, I said, well, how quiz got killed? He said, he broke into the neighbor house. He kept on saying that right there. I said, man, that ain't quiz. I said, well, why you ain't killed? Now, I'm serious. I'm telling him just this end, why you ain't dead? Because y'all hang together every day. If he went in the house, you went in there with him. So I'm looking at him negative, you know what I'm saying? Because this is the way I'm thinking. And uh, so I'm looking at him sideways, everything. So I go pick him up from my sister's house, Ruby house. I said, let's go out there where Quez got killed there. So the first thing I do is go to his mama's house because they said the neighbor. I go out there, I don't see no tape. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, you know, I studied a lot of stuff. I go out there, I don't see no tape around the house. I said, he ain't got killed here. Ain't no work with him. So we got a call, said it happened in Satilla Shore. So I get in my car, I ride over to Centilla Shore. This was that Monday, he got killed that Sunday. I ride over there and um, I don't see no tape around none of the houses. So we keep on riding. We, I see the spot off the rip in the middle of the road with blood everywhere. 
I said, man, they go away. Chris got killed right here. Mm-hmm. So I got out the car and started walking. So I started to put my hand on the blood. I said, yeah, this is blood. So I got a towel out of the back of my car, soaked it down with water. I took that towel and rolled it across that concrete, asphalt. Turned up red, red all the way across it. Mm-hmm. I took it, it's in the back of my car right now. I took it to sit in the back of my car. I said, he ain't get killed in no home invasion. He got killed in the middle of the road right here. William, what was going on from your vantage point at that moment? Were you also in that neighborhood? Yeah, I, 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 went, over, I went over there with them when it, we rode over there. But I tell you, man, you, you don't want to know what went on in my mind. And I don't even want to say. God knows I don't even want to say. So I'm going to let y'all go in and talk because... It was a sad day in the Avery family. Just, boy, people just don't know. Just thank God that God done what he had to do. That's all I can say. Ruby, can you walk me through when your family realized this is something that we need to get out to the public? When you felt the doors were closed as far as justice for Ahmad's death, was there a conversation about are we going to start protesting or are we going to start getting this out to the public? Um, the day when me and my brother, my two, my two brothers right here, the dad and the uncle, we kept going to the courthouse, going to the jailhouse. We talked with the man, he told me, oh, we doing this, we doing that. And my brother then would question him, y'all need to show us what's being done. My son ain't did no home invasion, none of this. He kept saying that's what it was. And my brother and my um, my two brothers kept saying that, no, that's not him. Y'all don't know his character, that's not him. So our next step, we went to a lawyer. A lawyer that my brother then was raised up, we went to school with. He turned us down, flat mm. down. We had a lot of people turn us down in the, in the system, in the court system, turned us down. But we didn't give up. We kept fighting. We kept fighting and all us connected together, we got together. And we say, this ain't going down like this here. That's my first time hearing that story. But to yes. back, back up what she's saying, um, through the whole protest, it was, I can't say was it a female, male, what color, whatever. It was an officer was kept telling me like something's corrupt about it. Mm-hmm. And was telling me to look up certain words and how to go about it. And it was sending me messages to other people. Um, I never spoke on it. So from, when the video came out, I knew, I said, you know what? It's time to go out there. We had a whole group on Facebook. They had made on Facebook, I remember. And I we kept telling everybody, man, we need to go out there and do a protest. We need to go out there and do a protest. But everybody let the police handle it. Let the police handle it. We couldn't get information. They wouldn't give us reports at first. They wouldn't do nothing. Mm-hmm. They wanted him to look like he broke in somebody's house. Mm-hmm. But when the video came out, that's when it was right. like, oh, well, we care now. Yeah. We want to help him mm-hmm. and, and all mm-hmm. this stuff here. So all of the stuff, the news outlets they was putting out first, all that stuff is fake. All the carelessness is fake mm-hmm. because they knew. There you I go. I personally know they knew. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just certain people ain't willing to give up their job right. behind it to make mm-hmm. the right choice to say, hey, this is a racial situation. Mm-hmm. But I mean, we like he said, he got a family that fight, and they've been fighting with us since day one. But I mean, this whole situation is racial, so yeah, yeah definitely. You can't beat around the bush. You can't. That's right. You go, bro. The day Quiz got killed, when my brother came in from Florida. He didn't even go home. He came straight where we were, and me, him, and Gary rolled to Satilman. And that's when we, um, I tear up every time because it, it just was, it was crazy because my brother Gary got out the truck first and he said, take a picture of this house. He said, take a picture of that house. Take a picture of this house. He said, cause somebody see me something. And so as my brother Mark were backing in to get where I can get out and we went to see where he got killed at and I had on a white shirt, like my sister said, and I kneeled down and I put my white shirt in there. I said, it's the blood right here. And so the guy that killed my brother, my nephew, he come out there. Mm-hmm. And I thank God to this day mm-hmm. that we didn't know who he was. Mm-hmm. He told us to get up out that neighborhood. And that's where my brother Mark said, I ain't going no damn well. Because this way my son got killed and we come to find out what's going on. He said, now you can take your son up out of here. And that's what he did. 
So I just thank God, but just to be out there and to, I felt, I felt so much racism out there when I went out there. I was shaking all over the place. I was all over the place. Cause I was scared because for your neighbors, I, I, I got neighbors that stay by me. And when we hear gunshots, we all come out the door to see what's going on. Mm -hmm. And for the neighbors to be in that close of area and didn't even come out to see what was going on. Why is y'all hurting this child? Why is y'all doing this to this child? Cause I'm a mother. My mother instinct kick in. I don't care what color you are. My mother instinct kicks in. All right, there you go, mom. Why is y'all doing it. this child like this here? Right. Nobody came out. I hold everybody responsible for my nephew's right. death in that neighborhood. Right. Because none of y'all mm -hmm. came out. It was, it, it was, none of y'all. It was, it was one lady that she, and it, it was one lady. It me up so bad, I can't even go in that neighborhood. Yeah. And no know more. what? This lady spoke out. And check this out. She was the only one came and spoke out and get what she moved and sold her house. She came out and said, why was nobody arrested? Because she watched it. Her window got shot out. She just had a little arm bone baby. The pellets hit the window of her house. He could have got killed. Her kid could have got shot. But she was the only one who spoke out. And guess what? After she spoke out, she put her house up for sale. sale. She sold her house. She moved. The Arbery family describes two traumas. First, learning that their son, nephew, and cousin was shot to death in the street. Then, over 70 days later, seeing the video that stunned the world. That moment from their perspective when we come back. Welcome back to Core TV Live. I'm Julia Janae. We continue to bring you an exclusive sit down interview with the family of Ahmad Arbery. It's the first time the six brothers and sisters of Ahmad's father, Marcus Arbery, talk about the day they lost the 25 year old Ahmad Arbery, whom they called Quez. Kim Cummings says her daughter waited at the hospital to see if her cousin's corpse would ever be brought in, hoping it would bring some answers. Here's more from the Arbery family. My co worker came. And she know how I am about kids anyway. I deal with kids. If it takes 24 7, I do it. She said, Kim, have you heard about the shooting at Satilla? I said, I know I did. Right then, she clicked me right there because I know I had family out there living out there and I got friends live out that way. She said, Well, um, you might need to uh, call. It didn't dawn on me it was going to be somebody out of my family. Because she's dealing with kids. Like, right now, I'm dealing with kids. I deal with them all the time. She said, well, um, I said, I'm gonna go ahead and go in the lunch. I got two, they give me two hours lunch now. I need to take one hour, give me two hours. I said, I'm gonna go on the lunch and kind of call around and see what's going on. One of my daughters went to the hospital. She said, well, um, mama. I said, what? She said, where you at? I said, I'm right here not too far from the courthouse. She said, you hear anything about Quez getting killed? I said, no, I did not. She waited for his body to come in there because she don't want to go back there and look at the boy's body and stuff like that. She goes back. My daughter does. She goes back there and look at him. She said, Mama, if it is true, they ain't bringing him here yet. So they, they waited a long time to even bring him there. She waited around. She said, Mama, it's about time to get off now, so I'm going to go ahead and go home. And when she called back again, she said, Mama, they never did bunk quick. We need to find out what's going on. When it happened, my boss, that I worked for. She said, it's like the right round the corner where it happened at. And she said, Kim, tell me this not true. She said, can you get in this truck with me? And I can give you, she came in on a truck with her. She said, I'm gonna show you exactly where it happened at. I got there and I broke down crying, right? She said, that's when they killed your nephew man. It wasn't no home invasion. Mm. My boss told me that. Yvonne, I'm hearing your family say over and over, we knew this wasn't a home invasion. It's obvious it wasn't a home invasion just because of the location. But it took months before there was an arrest in this case. How do you process that as an aunt of Quez? It's so hard. It's so hard when you this is for my brother and sister. I'm the one to stay out of town. And um, when my baby sister done called me, and, and told me, Vaughn, I'm finna send you something through your phone. And I had to actually watch that video. Mm -hmm. That was the first time I ever seen it. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I have seen it yet. Hold it together. 
that video was terrible. It was terrible. I could see it because I was laying in the bed and my baby girl, she was hollering in the house. And I jumped up, thought somebody was in the house. So I grew up and grabbed my gun. And uh, she said, no, mama. She said, you need to see this video. So I just got off of work that morning. So I looked at the video, I said, Lord, no. I just went down and I said, what is this? He was fighting the man with the gun. It's the, the far as I got with it. He was fighting for his life. When I tell you, fighting, he was literally fighting for his life till he got tired. He got tired. He got tired of fighting. And I couldn't watch no more. But I try to encourage everybody, you know, regardless whether you want to look at that video or not, watch the video. Because the video is knowledge. It lets you know that it's hatred out here. On, it's not going nowhere. On, you know what I'm saying? So watch the video regardless right. whether you want to watch it or not. Because if you don't watch the video, guess what? You're still blind. Thank you, You're still in the oh, blind. Man, you watch that video and yeah. it lets you know just how much you'll still hate it because it's the color of your skin. Multiple videos from multiple vantage points are expected to be presented as evidence at the joint trial in this case. Defense attorneys for the McMichaels and Roddy Bryan have claimed there's additional footage that hasn't yet been seen by the public. This family says they are bracing for what's to come. When you kill in my family, what else can you do to me? That's why justice got to be served. I'm telling you. What keeps you all strong? And sometimes you get you get so hurt till you lash out at each other. Yep. That's yep. how we showing mm -hmm. that what happened to Quez, what it's doing to us. I called my sister Ruby and we won't talk for two or three days because I'm angry. We so angry. Mm -hmm. We we couldn't do nothing. And it's making us angry at each other. So that's why we pray. We got people praying along with us. We go through prayer services. We having therapy online on every fourth Sunday, Saturday. We doing all kind of stuff to keep us strong from not. Cause some this stuff, the video by itself, it it made me want to just die. You know, I just wanted to give up because if you knew Quez, I, the look that he gave you in his face, you would have said, "Why these people did this to him?" It was something about Quez's face. And when he go to church with me, and we sat in the back of the church together, and I said, Quez, what you doing back there? I, I got a girl number in my hand. You know, and stuff like that. He, he went home a fly. And you wonder why people but, did this, and that's what hurt so bad. Well, the biggest thing is, the biggest hurt thing is this him. You look at a child, it's just like your child out there by himself. And you got these three grown old men, just a child. And see, we always protected each other. We know how he feel. He went, we wasn't there to, that's what really hurt me, that we wasn't there to protect him. You see what I'm saying? And they took advantage of him. Hey, come on, bro. They took advantage of him. Took God to kill a child. To kill a child. That wasn't nothing but a baby. Mm -hmm. These old men, even the man's son was older than him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we yeah, know in yeah. in Georgia there was no hate crime statute before or at the time of Ahmad's death. Kevin, did you know that? Were you surprised that Georgia does not have a hate crime statute as of February twenty third, twenty twenty? But Georgia like to sweep everything. Thank you. It's a it's the person y'all seen on camera. Yeah, yeah. I've seen many of your faces at the pretrial hearings. And you've heard a lot of really difficult details when you're at those hearings. Tell me how you prepare for the trial now that it is so close to starting. You have to pray to God for strength, first of all. You have to go to him for strength. Because seeing stuff like that with your loved ones getting killed like that, it's a mind thing. It's a mind. It, it messes your mind up. If you ain't strong. Still have, I, I'm saying me personally, I still have questions. Yeah. about that right there. You know what I'm saying? Because why so long? You know what I'm saying? And for Koya's trial and stuff getting ready to come up, to me it's like you're out in the battlefield with a bunch of blowed up pipes in the ground. Wherever you step at, you don't know where you're stepping at. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because 
manly people dealing with this here. And when you got manly people dealing with stuff, you know what I'm saying? You don't know whether they're righteous or not. You know what I'm saying? So you, that's the stuff you got to deal with. And you sit, get on your knees every night and pray to God. You know what I'm saying? That this trial come out right. We get justice for queer. But I, being honest, I don't know. 